One of the key arguments for 60 FPS or higher in games is improved responsiveness, but what's to stop the developers from running a 30 FPS game's internal logic and controller input polling at quote unquote 60 FPS internally, or even quote unquote 120 FPS? Not that the games are actually running this fast, but the internal logic is, even if things are not being fully rendered 120 times per second. It sounds like a nice, simple way to improve latency and the end user experience without as much overhead as rendering the game at 120 FPS. So why not? Why not, Alex? And I think games do do this. Games do certainly. Yeah, I mean, I think the most recent example that John talks about was uh, No Rest for the Wicked, Mm -hmm. uh, where the simulation side of things is decoupled from rendering. But isn't it the case that like Forza was like doing like 360 updates a second? Racing games all the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... So like here, like like the simulation fidelity is like one thing. Also, like for games where you want to stop rapidly or change movement, uh, it'll definitely help all those things. But you still can't get around the fact that you're waiting for a V-Sync to yeah. refresh. You'll just yeah. never get around it. So it, it has like limited utility. But it, it's one of the core reasons why I think you look at that uh, very old now research from Tom showing the 60 hertz games on last gen consoles and how they have such a variety of different input latencies. Some of that has to do with animation. Some of that has to do with other uh, engine design decisions or gameplay decisions. But I would imagine where is polling and how is polling done for user input is probably one of the key reasons why all these games have such different input latencies. Yeah, uh, you can definitely get input latency wins just through smart coding, right? I think uh, one of the classic examples back in the day was when Criterion moved from 60 FPS in Burnout to 30 FPS with Need for Speed Most Wanted. And um, yeah, they actually achieved an input lag end to end of about 83 milliseconds in a 30 FPS game, which doesn't sound that great, but it is up there with some 60 FPS games, even in the current era. So mm-hmm. that was a particularly impressive example. And I think the way they did that was they ran everything on one, on the CPU side, on one thread, but highly right. parallelized it. And, um, you know, the whole idea was, you know, there'd be uh, an input frame, processing frame and an output frame, and then scan out and, you know, that would get you to your 80 odd milliseconds. But, you know, there's been some fantastic um, advances in input lag uh, sort of reductions and, you know, Call of Duty uh, specifically, going back again to Tom's research, it's like 30 milliseconds end to end, which is like phenomenal when you think about it, even if it is 60 FPS with V-Sync and whatnot, that's that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anything to add to that, Oliver? I'd agree with Alex in the sense that, like, if you're looking for a more responsive game, the way to get a more responsive game is to improve the frame rate. Uh, Really, it's to improve the frame rate. I mean, from the user end user's perspective, obviously, from the developer's perspective, it could be a great many things. But from your perspective, it's to improve the frame rate and to hopefully deliver those frames in a manner that's consistent. So whether that's VR or whether that's achieving a V-Sync lock, either of those could be true. But yeah, I mean, so many racing games run their simulation at like 360 hertz or something, or advertise that fact at least in many interviews. So, you know, if you if you especially like very sophisticated uh, track based racer, racers like the Forza series, if you go back, like they're always talking about doing like 240 hertz polling or 360 hertz polling or something. So it's actually fairly common in at least certain genres of games. Yeah, absolutely. But ultimately, yeah, you're right. The faster uh a screen, a new frame appears on the screen, the lower the, the latency, obviously, you're getting visual information more quickly. It just kind of makes sense. 